Hey, what's up? This is Václav here. Today I'm going to look at the Sonoff thermostatic radiator valve, or the TRV. I will compare it to the Danfoss Z-Wave valve I have been using around my house for years now, and I want to mention a few other products out there. I will ignore the standard Sonoff bridge and their application, and I will bring it directly to the Home Assistant. I'll hook it up to my automations, and I will go quite into detail, as I usually do in my videos. Specifically, I will try to calibrate the temperature to the external room temperature sensors. But before we start, let me explain why I have this valve in the first place. The first reason is, it's winter, so it's relevant. But I already have the old Z-Wave valves all around the place, so why did I get this one? See, quite regularly, I get emails from people asking me for an advice that they are building a new house and uh, they ask what I recommend. Now, I can tell them uh, what I really have experience with, the ones I have, uh, but the ones I have, they are pretty old. And they regulate the temperature, they are quiet, and the battery lasts kind of half of the season. But there are a few things I don't like about them. And uh, there are plenty of uh, other new products out there, and I suppose some of them are probably better, and I suppose even cheaper. So I did some research, and I think that um, if I buy a new one today, I'll be probably buying the Sonoff TRV. So when Sonoff sent me a New Year's email at the end of the year, I kindly asked them to send me one that I'd like to test it, and they did with a bunch of other gadgets, so there will be a few other interesting videos about these. And I have been testing it for a few days, and I quite like it. But uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Now, this is not completely objective review. I didn't really compare many valves out there, and uh, I was sent this one by Sonoff. Uh, but I kind of liked uh, how the TRV looked like, uh, with the clean, minimalistic design, with only one button, it also works as a dial, and the display through the plastic is really nice. Uh, I also looked at the valve from Akara, but the reviews I read were not really great. They complain about the noise, the quality, and the battery life. The valve apparently keeps uh, doing adjustments all the time, and the battery lasts a few weeks only. The Danfoss valve I have doesn't use Zigbee, but Z-Wave, that is less common nowadays. And it costs about twice as much as the son of TRV. Also, the controls are quite limited, and the reaction time is very slow. They also have a Zigbee version now, but I didn't try that one. But that one is more expensive as well. Then there are a few other Zigbee products, and uh, then a bunch of uh, TRVs with proprietary protocol. They're out of the question for me, because I want to connect them to Home Assistant. So, what are the main criteria that are important for me? Well, the first is how they regulate the temperature in the room. Second, the noise. That is one of the most important factors for me, especially for the ones I have in the bedrooms. In the past, I had uh, some older battery-powered valve, and uh, that one was really bad. I had to throw it out. Then, the battery life. Ideally, I'd like it to last through the whole winter season. And I like to use the rechargeable batteries, which is one of the issues I have with Danfoss. The rechargeable batteries have a lower voltage, uh, so uh, the valve complains that the battery is low um, after a very short time, a few days after I change the batteries. And I'm never quite sure how long the battery will actually last before it stops working. I know the manufacturers recommend regular batteries, but uh, I have 10 radiators around the house, and if each takes three batteries, and if I have to change them twice per year, I would really need to uh, buy and throw away 60 batteries every year, <laughs> and I don't want to do that. And then the price. Uh, they are one of the more pricey items, and again, it's times 10, uh, and uh, so this could be quite significant. And finally, the design. So, this is what I'm going to be looking at. But first, let me discuss why do I use those uh, TRVs in the first place. 
What is the difference between these and the regular non-smart ones? Well, the non-smart ones, they really have only one set temperature. If I want to decrease the temperature in the house, all I can do is uh, adjust the central heating system and reduce the temperature there. But then uh, it will decrease it in the whole house. I cannot control it in the individual rooms. And uh, it would follow fixed pre-programmed schedule. And if you watched one of my previous videos, you know that I set the temperature in the individual rooms or zones based on the presence. So when our kids are not here or when I do not plan to use this office, um, the rooms are kept at a lower temperature. But uh, this thing is a bit more complex. When I leave the house in the morning and I come back in the afternoon, is it more efficient to decrease the temperature and then bring it back before I come back? Or keep the temperature constant all the time? And I'm not the expert here, but I think the answer is, it depends. <laughs> it depends on many things. What are the losses uh, in the house? What is the heating efficiency? And uh, perhaps what is the thermal capacity? And uh, if you're the expert and you would like to help me to calculate the optimal setup, please reach out in the comments or uh, on my Discord server. But my best understanding is, so far, that what works for my house is in the areas that will not need to use it for a long time, I'd decrease the temperature by about 2 or 3 degrees or so, not more. We have an efficient condensing boiler, so uh, it will not take too much energy to bring it back to the temperature. But if I completely turn it off, that would be less good. Except if you are out for the whole week or longer. Also, if it is a sunny day, this helps. I have this clever solution for the external shades on the south, and uh, it can actually heat up the house more than enough during the day. And we also have a fireplace which can bridge the gap in the evening. Now, back to Sonoff. Where did I stop? Uh, Sonoff sent me a bag with a few devices. The TRV was the biggest box in the airbag. Uh, the box is uh, quite a premium quality, which is quite a nice surprise. I had the Sonoff brand associated with the cheap sensors, like the door or motion sensors they make. But uh, this one looks much different. There is a small card with a QR code for the video instructions. And when you look at it, uh, they have a number of adapters for different fittings. Fortunately, I could uh, screw it up to mine without any of that, so that was easy. And then they say I can just insert the batteries, then I can screw it on the radiator, hit the button again, and then scroll the wheel to the off position and then push and hold the button for a couple of seconds to start a pairing. So I've done it. Uh, the pairing indicator uh, started blinking and uh, when I enabled pairing on my Zigbee to MQTT, I just discard that, does the interview and uh, finish the setup. I'm using the SkyConnect USB Zigbee adapter and it worked quite seamlessly. So I didn't use the son of Zigbee gateway they also sent me. I'll perhaps look at it some other time. Now, I'll just rename the device and we are done. I'm using it instead of the old Danfoss valve. So I renamed the old Danfoss valve uh, to some temporary name and I gave uh, this son of the old name. Uh, and everything keeps working as before. The dashboard, the automation. So that was easy. So let's see how it works. First, the noise. The Danfoss was already quite quiet, so it is, if it is at least as good, I'll be happy. Let's measure both. First, the Danfoss. I'll turn on the temperature and I'll try to measure the noise with my phone about two meters away. And I'll do the same with the Sonoff. Now, the noise is so low, it is hard to measure objectively with the phone. It uh, looks like the son of is slightly quieter and subjectively I had the feeling as well. But for the sake of the argument, let's say they're both the same. 
which is okay, as I consider Danfoss very quiet. Okay, so now let's look at the functions. Right off the bat, I have noticed that compared to the Danfoss TRV, the Sonoff reacts instantly to the changes. When I change the target temperature on my current valve, it takes up to five minutes before the valve registers the change. Here, when I change it, it reacts within a second. And I don't know if this is something to do with the Zigbee versus Z-Wave, but I love it. To be fair, for the day-to-day -day use, it's not that important as the setting is changed twice, maximum four times a day, and the radiator has a huge lag in response uh, before the radiator becomes warm or cools down, caused by the inertia of the system and the radiator term mass. So I suppose five minutes does not make a huge difference, but for some reason it always bothered me, and I was really excited to see it react instantly to the changes. So the second noticeable change is the TRV has more properties. And most importantly, it shows the current temperature and the temperature offset. Dampfos doesn't show that. And for this reason, I always used a custom thermostat card where I could show the current temperature from a separate temperature sensor somewhere in the room. On the other side, the TRV is mounted on the top of the radiator. So when the radiator becomes hot, it would falsely report higher temperature than, than there is really is in the room. And the valve is closed and the radiator is cold and the temperature would be much closer to the actual temperature. So it will be quite interesting to see how it will manage to regulate the target temperature. But then, all the other TRVs, including the Danfoss, they do the same. They also evaluate the temperature on the device. They just don't display the value. So I have no way of comparing that. In fact, I already have an external temperature sensor in the room, so that would arguably be more useful to display than the temperature measured on the device. So let's see. But we can at least see what the TRV does, so that'll be interesting. So how does it regulate the temperature? I let the valve installed throughout the day and comparing the temperature reported by the valve within the room sensor, I can confirm that when the radiator gets hot, it really reports quite higher temperature that uh, it's really in a real temperature in the room. So first thing I'm gonna try to do is I will wait for the radiator to cool down and then I will use the temperature calibration to make them both match. So I've tried that, that worked. But it turned out not to be the best strategy, since the TRV regulates the valve when the radiator is hot. And uh, since I calibrated it to the lower temperature, the room never quite reached the target temperature. So I've tried a different approach. I set the offset back to zero, uh, and I see how much the actual temperature will differ from the target temperature. And then I add the local offset to bring it back. And that seemed like a much better approach. And I'm quite happy with the result. So I'll call it quit. But uh, one thing I have noticed is that the way the Son of TRV works is that when it reaches the lower temperature, it will fully open the valve. And it, when it reaches the top, it will fully close it. So the temperature slightly oscillates around the target temperature. And I think in this aspect, Danfoss actually did slightly a better job. I have reached out to Sonoff and they confirmed that in February or March they will release a new firmware that will open the percentage opening setting to the users. I don't know how it will actually work and if it will work with the uh, Home Assistant. So I will test that uh, when this is out. So that was the temperature. There is one more feature that Danfoss doesn't have, uh, which is the mode. The TRV has three modes. Heating, off, and auto. Um, I will probably use that in the summer to turn it off when the heating is off. I've noticed uh, with the Danfoss that it was uh, sometimes still doing something even when the heating was off. So I was typically taking the batteries off uh, from the Danfoss in the summer, which was messing up my dashboard. So this might be a good uh, option for the summer. So that's all I could see within the week of use. 
I was not able to evaluate the battery life, but the Sonoff has three batteries and the Danfoss has only two. And it shows the battery state pretty accurately despite using the rechargeable batteries. And from the reviews I saw, I'm quite confident that even the battery will be a step forward. So in all the factors that are important to me, Sonoff turns out to be better than my current one, except the way it regulates the temperature. I was in fact ready to order a batch and uh, replace all my TRVs with Sonoff because the battery life and the non-responsiveness of the Danfoss really annoys me and I really like the Sonoff. But because of this temperature control, I decided to hold on until I test the new firmware. So more on that later. So now you know. I'm looking forward for your suggestions and comments below and now Let's make videos about the other son of gadgets I've got. And I'll see you there. Bye.